How the dark web works, this presentation is going to go over HTTP, HTTPS, VPNs, and onions. Tor and the dark web really started with a simple problem. Anonymous internet connections are really, really hard. Like, when you think about traditional internet connections, you've got the clients and you've got the server, and they communicate through unencrypted TCP. Um, so an attacker on the wire, you know, listening in through coffee shop Wi-Fi, can figure out who the client is, who the server is, and what you're talking about. And a malicious server can figure out who the client is and do some targeting. Um, you might add encryption so that an attacker can't figure out what you're talking about, uh, and they can only figure out which servers you're talking to. But the server can still figure out who the client is, and the attacker can still correlate clients to servers. We might solve this problem by adding a VPN. So anyone on the client side of the VPN can't figure out the server, and anyone on the server side of the VPN can't figure out the clients. Uh, we still have a problem though, and that is that the VPN can correlate the clients to the servers. So now we're just moving our trust from the server to the VPN, which is still not a very good idea. The key insight, however, is to add two VPNs. The first VPN can figure out who the client is, but not who the server is. And the second VPN can figure out who the server is, but not who the client is. And that's what Tor is. It's thousands of relays moving traffic around. Uh, we don't call them VPNs, we call them relays or nodes, uh, where users form a circuit of three relays, uh, not two. It could be any number, it could be four or five, but you know, the Tor project shows three. Um, no given relay can correlate a client to a server, and each user running Tor is completely indistinguishable. So there's no way to figure out who is talking to a given server. We still have a problem though. You might notice from this diagram, the client still knows everything. What if the server wants to remain anonymous as well? And that's where onion services come in. Uh, this is what we call the dark web. To create an onion service, First, the server selects a public-private key pair, as well as three relays to act as introduction points. Then, the relay takes this list of three relays, as well as their public key, signs it all, and puts it into a distributed hash table called the directory. This is basically a database, but more secure and uh, distributed over many computers. Then, the client somehow obtains the server's public key, uh, out of band, maybe they heard it from a friend or they found it on some website, and they ask the directory for the server's introduction points. Then the client picks a rendezvous, uh, which is the node that all the traffic between the client and the server are going to go through. Now the client tells the server where the rendezvous is through one of the introduction points. So the client tells the introduction point, which tells the server, hey, we're going to meet up at this spot. Now, at this point, we do have actually a connection between the client and the server through the introduction point. So if the Tor designers wanted to, they could have had all the connections go through just three pre-selected nodes. But that would put a lot of strain onto those three nodes. So if the Facebook Onion sites um, chose three relatively weak nodes, then all of the Facebook traffic would go through just three pathetic connections. Um, instead, we choose a single rendezvous point to transfer all the contents, and the introduction point only has to transfer the initial data about where the rendezvous is. And you can see that here. Uh, the client and the server connect through the rendezvous and not the introduction point, so that the introduction points only have to specify rendezvous and the rendezvous do all the heavy lifting. The rendezvous points can change every time for every single connection so that the load of each uh, of a single onion site is distributed evenly across the entire Tor network. Now keep in mind, all of these connections are happening through Tor circuits, which are going through three relays. Um, the spinal relay, we call it the exit. Um, all relays run the same software, um, but the exit relays have to volunteer to be exits because they have to route arbitrary data through the internet. So if someone accesses an ISIS site or um, you know, hacker.com, you know, uh, the FBI will show up to the exit relay operator's house and so they have to deal with all those legal consequences, which is why the exit relay is you know, a volunteer job. 
Now keep in mind, all of these connections are happening through these Tor circuits. So the client uses those three relays to talk to the rendezvous point, which uses those three relays again to the talk to the server. So how do you use Tor? Well, you mainly use it through the Tor browser, which can be found on the Tor website at torprojects.org. To download Tor, you just click Download Tor Browser, select your operating system, click Download, then you've just got to run it. I'll be running it from a terminal because I am on Linux and that is the recommended way to do it. But on Windows and Mac OS, there are graphical methods. Then you just click connect. And there you go. You're connected to the Tor network. You can check to make sure everything is working by going to check.torproject.org. You can see the Tor project thinks that my IP address is 185.220.102.244, which is going to be one of these exit relays, the ones that connect to the final servers. Uh, keep in mind that this IP address is not going to be my IP address or any of these uh, guard or middle relays. Now you can see if I refresh with Control shift l to generate a new circuit, my IP address changes as well. Um, this is because my exit node changes uh, along with the rest of my circuit. You can see your circuit by clicking the padlock on the top left of the browser. You can see from my home network, I connect to a relay in Germany, then the United States, then back to Germany again, and then through the Tor browser. That's a long distance. That's to Europe and then North America and then Europe again, and then to wherever the Tor project servers are. This makes Tor uh, the Tor browser a lot slower than uh, your other browsers. Connecting to an Onion site is no different. First, we get an Onion URL. This is the URL for my website. You can find it on the ClearNet version of my website. Uh, you can see it's this long string of characters. This is because the URL is actually just a public key. So it's just going to be some random bytes. Uh, but you can see it's just like connecting to any other website. You press enter and then it takes quite a while to load because it has to go through that entire handshake process and then six relays. But there you go, that's my website. You can see that the circuit goes from my home network to Finland, to Germany, to the United States, and then the rendezvous points, and then three other relays that I don't know about, at which point it goes to my website. Hosting an Onion site is also quite easy. Simply, uh, you just gotta... Okay, I'll just... Uh... Simply run the Tor daemon and connect it to a HTTP website. So you can see in my Docker Compose file here, I've got an Nginx server. Uh, I might change this port to 8000 so that an unprivileged user can, act, can, can run this container. Uh, and it's just got some basic website on here. And I've got the Tor router. Uh, which is going to be the Tor daemon, which is going to be the thing that actually hosts my Onion site and proxies it forward to this Nginx server. Uh, all this does is it runs the Tor daemon with this configuration file. You can see it's listening on port 80 and it's forwarding that to Nginx on port 80. So I can run this. And now, if I check on my local host, I have a website running on port 8000. But, and if, I have to check this as root. If I look into Tor data slash hands on onion slash host name, I get an onion URL, which I can put into the Tor browser to access my site being hosted on my local machine through the dark web through the Tor network. Keen eyed viewers will notice that my URL started with Choey Dev, while this one is just some random string of letters uh, the whole way through. To generate these vanity URLs, as they're called, you use a program called NKP2240. 
all you do is run it and specify a prefix. In this case, the prefix is going to be test. And it will constantly generate keys until it gets keys that look like tests, at which point it will save them into some directory that you specify. So how can you help Tor? Well, the easiest way to help Tor is to run Snowflake. Simply go to snowflake.torproject.org, install the extension, and then click the extension and click the switch. People who are blocked from connecting to entry relays can connect to your computer through a technology called WebRTC. It's the same thing that you use to make video calls through Zoom. Uh, then your computer can connect to an entry relay on their behalf. Uh, if you'd like to do more, you can host your own relay. I have on my GitHub a dockerized Tor relay that you can use to help the Tor network. Thank you.